Instead of her favorite moment, she couldn't give us just one. Instead, she said in, it is, quote, the moment that tears swell in her eyes, and you know you could not change the diagnosis of cancer or even the treatment regimen, but you could make the journey not so difficult. You made a difference, end quote. Please welcome Julie Henson to our stage and via our video screens, Joyce Lowry from Okinawa. And a side note here, Joyce's high school students were responsible for creating the tape you're about to see. Konnichiwa from Okinawa, Japan. Julie, I'm sorry I can't share this evening with you, but no, I am there in spirit. This essay is for you. She held my hand across the world and made everything seem possible. Cancer enters our lives unbidden and sometimes stubbornly refuses to leave. The journey we take from diagnosis onward is different for everyone. This unpredictable trail is filled with arduous climbs, zip line descents, and crazy hairpin turns. Having a special nurse to guide you along the way is a gift beyond compare. I met Julie Hinson in November of 2010 when I was referred to Dr. Elizabeth Monroe after having developed an unusual discharge 10 years post-cervical cancer. Julie's cheerful demeanor easily drew me in and I instantly felt I was in very good hands. Over the past couple of years we have shared some very difficult moments as well as many instances of joy. She can help me see the humor in situations that seem as far from joy as can be imagined. I am so blessed to have gone through the past few months with her at my side. Though I did not have cancer at that time, Dr. Monroe and Julie kept close tabs on me with frequent follow-ups to ensure that all was well. Julie's joy was palpable when in December of 2011, I told them I was moving to Okinawa, Japan to work on one of our U.S. air bases. It was to be the adventure of a lifetime. We kept in touch for the first six months of my journey. Weekly updates filled her in on all I was experiencing in a new culture. I returned to the States for the summer months and, of course, had my routine follow-up exam with Dr. Monroe. I had just been back on Okinawa three days when Dr. Monroe called to tell me I had tested positive for cancer. I was stunned. Ten years post-cervical cancer, it doesn't typically return. But here it was, and I was half a world away. A check with the Naval Hospital here revealed that there were no gynecologic oncologists on island and that I would need to return to the States for treatment. Julie jumped into action, completing the various documents the federal government needed in order to write my travel orders and put me on a flight to Oregon. Julie didn't hesitate when documents needed to be redone, scanned, and sent. She worked so hard on her end to get everything done and get me back there. In the middle of all of that, Typhoon Bolivan, a Category 5 storm, hit the island of Okinawa. Throughout the storm, Julie was on the phone and email, helping me work through the necessary documents and assuring me I would soon be on my way. Upon my arrival in the United States, Julie was there to greet me with a warm hug and lots of her ever-present cheerfulness. She had my scans and surgery arranged and knew me well enough to know I like lots of information and for it to be laid out for me to easily access. Dr. Monroe works out of two different hospitals in two separate cities. My surgery was to be robotic, so it was scheduled at the larger facility, not the one where Julie worked. Nevertheless, I wasn't off her mind. She sent messages to me letting me know she was thinking of and praying for me and that she knew I was in the best of hands. The journey through the months of chemotherapy was traveled with Julie by my side. When side effects seemed insurmountable, Julie was there by phone or email to see me through. On the days that I struggled, though I lived an hour from the hospital, I felt Julie's presence. Her compassion infused with humor was the perfect prescription. Upon completion of treatment, it was time to get back to Okinawa and back to work. 
Julie again spent endless hours completing government paperwork so that I could re receive travel orders for my return. One Friday evening at 5.30, Julie sent me a document that she had spent hours completing. When I received it, I realized it was not the document I needed. I had sent her the wrong document. When Julie learned this, she cheerfully asked me to send the correct one and said she would start right in on it. Now, Julie has a young family and is working on her master's degree. The last thing she needed was a new document at 5.30 on a Friday night. Yet there was no hesitation or frustration on her part, just her usual cheerfulness. I have just returned to Okinawa. As it should be, I am adjusting to walking this journey of health without Julie at my side. I am comforted, however, by knowing she will always be there when I need her to hold my hand across the world.